Okay, before I even start, don't try this at home because there's very high current and projectiles and shit that YouTube people should just not even be like thinking about doing because that'd be really bad. Okay? Okay. Now, what Jonathan has here is the electrokinetic gun, Gauss rifle, coil gun, you know, all same thing. Basically, I have a camera flasher inside of the box, and it charges these two large capacitors, which there's actually space to put four of these large capacitors in, but we're running just two for now. It charges, and this is the power supply for the camera flasher right here. Uh, we can step up the voltage to get it even higher than it should be. Um, first, you press the charge button to charge it, and then when the light starts blinking, you simply turn the switch, and it will fire whatever uh, magnetic material you have in there. Now, what we've been using as projectiles are these nails here. Uh, because it's an inductor, it actually pulls the nail with one pulse, out the barrel instead of shoving it. If you listen closely, you can hear it. I don't know if it can be heard on the camera, but... I don't think the camera picks up those frequencies. Step up the voltage. There's a ready signal light. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute. There it goes. You can let it flash for a few more seconds to get the most power charged up. Then you turn the charging off, you aim, and you fire. Uh, I think that one went straight through, actually. But ladies and gentlemen, when these suckers are charged, you really don't want to touch these, because this is what happens. Three, two, one. Look at that. <laughs> you see how it it's, ate? It's vaporized instantly. Imagine your finger being sublimated on contact. I mean, we're talking, there are some things that would suck, and, like, sublimating your finger would suck a lot. So just, just don't, just don't touch it. I might have to reduce the uh, the uh, reactance of this because it. I mean the coils. The coil has gotten hot now. Just one shot and it's hot. Um, I need to. Be able well, to one shot earlier it was hot. If he's saying one shot and it's hot, that means it's hotter than hot. So that's pretty hot. So I actually set up a uh, target here with a notebook that we can. Uh, step up the sheets of paper uh, to see its penetration power we cut it down to three capacitors because there's just too much resistance in the system for four capacitors to be efficient and discharge fast enough that went through nice nice so we are actually have a charging sequence going on right now uh, what we're going to try to do next is make an amplifier for the charging sound with a speaker from an old 20Q game thing. Uh, there are two possibilities. 90% chance we blow the speaker, 10% chance we kill ourselves. We'll be right back. Just got it right here. It's pretty small, but it should be what we need it for. Of course, it's not rated for the current we're going to put through it, but... We'll see what happens. And whatever happens, 
you know, most people say whatever happens, happens, but with me, it's whatever happens is almost certainly involved with fire. We've decided we're going to make another coil gun out of uh, a high C straw, because it fits the nail better, since we can't really make a sabot round for a coil gun. So, Jonathan, you have the materials for another coil gun? Yeah, let me pull it out of my ass. <sighs> <sighs> Turns out the speaker just provided too much resistance, so we can't we can't use the speaker. Uh, yeah, that's what we thought. Anyway, we've modified it with the smaller, longer barrel for more accuracy, and of course a straighter flying projectile that won't flip and spin and do a barrel roll. Um, what we <laughs> Jonathan is uh, disappointed that the coil gun didn't work. Um. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he looked like a. D He's got his uh circuit testing board over here, and we're making sure we can run this on an SCR switch, so that we don't have to bluntly transfer 200 ish volts, ish volts something to else. something else, which is a lot of volts to something else. What he's worried about is that we've worn out the switch, and passing 200 volts through it just isn't a good idea anymore. Or that it's just not working as optimally as it used to. So we're using what appears to be a normal transistor, but it's actually a... SCR. What we're testing to see is if we can actually charge it and fire it without it exploding, because that's a crucial flaw if it explodes. Exploding's bad. Okay. Just throw the switch. It's not on fire. Ready? Go. It's charging. It's charging up. Now I'm just going to do a low voltage burst for now. Alright, low voltage burst. Alrighty, here goes. Three, two, one. Alright, it's shot and nothing's wow. on fire. My room is still intact and we still have a house. <laughs> um, that's good. That's progress. Here. JK, we cooked off his breadboard. Everything was just started smoking. Fresh baked SCRs. You ruined it. Is that it? It's over? It's pretty warm. <laughs> yeah! Alright, so, uh, proof of concept. Electrokinetic gun. Finished. For now. I mean, we have to get another SCR or two rated for... The amperage, I mean, this one's rated for 600 volts, we're only putting 200 volts through it, but it just couldn't take it, and it exploded. A key factor in a project working is that it stays unexploded. Very, very strict thing that has to happen. It has to not explode. So, uh, this is just our little proof of concept one. And, uh, he's, or his little proof of concept one. And we're going to make a bigger one eventually. And look for that on YouTube, because it'll be there. See ya.